internet site for irreverent, cool, and entertaining talk programming. It's LA Talk Radio. We say what we want. You're listening to Hotty Hell with Candace Keita. Candace Keita. Right here on LA Talk Radio. And hello, everybody. You are hooked up to Hottie Help with the host, Candice Keita. Hello, Candice. Hey, Doug Stewart. How are you today? I am uh, grand. Awesome. Doug Stewart, my trusty as ever co-host. Why do you trust me? Uh, After all we've been through, why do you maintain trust in me? You know, me? that's actually a really good question. See? I have to think about it. <laughs> this is a safety show, and let's get straight right away. Should you trust me or not? I don't know. How many years have I known you? Probably over a decade. I don't know. Are you trustworthy? Well, do a couple more Google searches before, and, yeah. before I can wear that moniker proudly. You're right. You're right. But yes, you are listening to Hottie Help with Candace Keita. I am your host. And you are who, Candace? Who are you? What makes up Candace Keita? A lot of things. Um, but first, I wanted to say that we're broadcasting live. Oh, indeed, we we're are. broadcasting live from the beautiful new studios at LA Talk Radio in sunny Los Angeles, California. Very near uh, Valley Village. Mm-hmm. Very near Valley Village. I, I just love how all these places uh, in the Valley now have names, whereas before you were just lost on Van Owen. Now you're not lost on Van Owen. You're in Valley Village. Oh, you're in Tarzana. Yeah, that's even getting further out. Um, but seriously, I did want to get uh, back to some of your credits because you are the hottie, and that is part of Hottie oh, Help. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, you are so blisteringly hot that <laughs> Mel Gibson had to put you on the back of a motorcycle. Yes, I actually, um, I was a series recording on a show for ABC called Complete Savages. Produced by? Uh, produced by... Mel Gibson. Right, produced by Mel Gibson, of course. And You love these stuff. Uh, you, exam you questions I give I'm you. Like, Gee, yeah, what is my name again? Um, yeah, and uh, I was reoccurring as his girlfriend. The only time he has ever been on American television, and so when really mm -hmm, the only how time about it doesn't count being on DMZ. No, but you mean TMZ? <laughs> TMZ. TMZ. You're thinking of DMX plus TMZ. Uh, I put a little hip hop, a little uh, tabloid journalism together. That's Same my thing. new show, DMZ. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyways, TMZ. Yeah. Whenever he came on the show, um, he was Officer Steve Cox, and believe it or not, he was Safety Expert Officer ah, Steve Cox. So in a way, he may have put you on this path. Maybe he did. Maybe it was fate, kismet, and destiny. Uh, but anyways, and so when he came on the show, I would come on as his girlfriend, Misty, and um, at the end of every episode, I died a horrible death. Grizzly. That we would, horrible grizzly, grizzly death that we would plan, um, some of which included... Now, was this before Kenny on South Park or no, after? No, I was actually compared to Kenny on South ah. Park. Many people have compared, um, and I think it's except, on Wikipedia. Except you can understand Kenny better, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I died by eating too much turkey, um, tryptophan poisoning on the Thanksgiving episode. Can you really have too much tryptophan? Can you really have too much turkey on Thanksgiving? Oh, please. With stuffing and yeah. all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and I died when he dropped a, a blender. We were making martinis, and he dropped a blender into a hot tub and electrocuted me. Hmm. So that was interesting. And I also died, like you said, on the back of a motorcycle because I fell off w without wearing a helmet. Uh, and that is actually a very good safety tip. Uh, if you're on a motorcycle with Mel Gibson, you should wear a helmet. Yeah, but at other times, <laughs> you know, it's at but, your discretion. You know, it's so funny because we were shooting at the Universal back lot, and there I am um, sitting on the back of the bike without a helmet in real life, driving around up and down the hills. Uh, of, you know, with the universal back area. Well, and it's actually funny. Candace and I had a, a true intersection that day because I was working uh, at my job that day, which also happens to be at Universal, and her production was holding up my job. We could not get past because they were uh, holding up all the cars for her production. Yeah. So it was very, <laughs> very interesting. It was a uh, unfortunate kismet at that point with, uh, with her production. And that show uh, starred... 
Uh, Keith was it Keith Carradine? One of the Carradines? Yeah, Keith Carradine was there. He's super nice. Not not the Kung Fu Carradine. That's David Carradine. This is the brother, right? Right. right. I don't know if it's the younger or the older brother, but it's one of the brothers. I think he, he had a big success on Broadway uh, with a show called Barnum, I believe. P. Oh, really? Barnum, yeah. And one of the other brothers, isn't he um, on Revenge of the Nerds? Absolutely. That would be Robert Carradine. Gotcha. That's and right. And then the father is John Carradine, who starred in The Grapes of Wrath, which we seem to be headed for right now, a Depression era tale. <laughs> And that was uh, the father that started that great acting family that rivals, of course, the Barrymores and the Booths. Who can forget the Booths? Uh, mm-hmm. Edwin Booth, the great actor, and then and of Claire course, Luce Booth? right? And then, uh, well, I know John Wilkes Booth. Booth. Oh, John Wilkes. Well, you know, his acting career did get overshadowed by his da, da, da. <laughs> by his political assassination career. But he started out as an actor, and that that was one of America's uh, most foremost acting families. If I could hit a symbol right now, I hit a symbol for you right now. Uh, like, come hit on, the joke. come on. You're like hey, a Shecky Green joke. Hey, hey, hey. The mm-hmm. other thing I wanted to uh, get at is you know, your credentials uh, as a help person. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about where your head is about helping women. Sure. Um, I wrote a book. It's coming out next year. It's called The Haughty Handbook, A Girl's Guide to Safety. And uh, this is basically a safety primer for young women. And it's going to be available next year at barnesandnoble.com and amazon.com. So I'm kind of encouraging everybody to look out for it and to please purchase it. What is the uh, uh, format of the book? You know, thank you for asking. Um, It's a collection of top 10 uh, uh, top 10 questions and then I answer so it's a top 10 list basically and we so talk you're about you're like David Letterman yes it is a top 10 list and it's except and it's, and it's a, funny except you're a hot David Letterman thank you but um, <laughs> oh, wait can you do that again can I, can I thank you ever so Oh, my God. You're going to sing a happy birthday, Mr. President, happy just about. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday to Oh, you. I pushed the ham button. Yeah, I pushed the, the ham, ham button. button. Anyways, but going back, mm-hmm. it is a book um, on safety tips for young women, such as safety while dating, safety while surfing the Internet, safety when you travel, or Which uh, we dealt with uh, on our first show, I believe. Yeah, the first show with uh, Nicole, Nicole Pulliam. We talked about um, safety while traveling on your own or with other people. And uh, the next... Um, Inya Flack was right, very gracious. Inya and on. she came on and the uh, subject did, that day... Oh, car safety. Car safety. We did car safety with her. And so all Stranger sorts danger. Of, yeah, all sorts of safety tips. If you're in the dorm room, um, getting your first apartment, moving out on your own, uh, workplace safety... Uh, like I said, safety online. So we just addressed all these issues, but hopefully in a in a somewhat humorous way, and it's easy to digest. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You don't want to be ponderous uh, and really overwhelm people and, and create an environment that's not pleasant or fun to live in. It's just sort of check these things out, think about these things, why you're moving forward, and especially now that we have a huge electronic uh, duplication of ourselves, MySpace, exactly. Facebook. Uh, you don't exist solely as a human being now, you exist out in cyberspace as this zeros and one mm-hmm. creation, and it's very important to protect your digital self and as well. Exactly, and I think that a lot of young, young women didn't don't understand that, and it's all kind of relatively new within the last 15 years. I didn't understand that, and I basically tell people, hey, you know, learn from my mistakes, learn from you know, um, you know, five years of research and what I've been doing in women's safety issues. Oh, wait a minute.